In the quaint town of Maplewood, nestled between the lush embrace of thick forests and rolling hills, there stood an old, weather-beaten house at the end of Hawthorne Lane. It was here that the Peterson family, newly relocated from the bustling city, sought a fresh start. The house, while old and creaking with the weight of untold stories, was charming in its own right. However, it was not the house that held a dark secret, but the dilapidated shed that stood in its shadow at the far end of the backyard. From the day the Petersons moved in, the shed exuded an aura of mystery and unease. Its wood was rotting, the paint peeling away like aged skin, and its door always seemed to sway slightly, even on the stillest of days. It was the kind of place that local children would dare each other to approach, but never to enter. The youngest of the Petersons, a curious and imaginative boy named Tommy, was particularly drawn to the shed. He would often stand at his bedroom window, peering out at it as the sun set, watching as it took on a sinister appearance in the dimming light. Strange sounds seemed to emanate from within its walls, soft whispers that danced on the wind, unintelligible but unmistakably human. His parents warned him never to go near it, citing its structural instability as reason enough, but to Tommy it was more a challenge than a warning. The shed called to him, its secrets wrapped in the shadows that seemed to cling to its frame. One fateful evening, as dusk settled over Maplewood, Tommy's curiosity overcame his caution. With a flashlight in hand, he crept out of the house and towards the shed. Each step felt heavy, as if the very air around the shed was thicker, charged with a foreboding energy. As he approached, the whispers grew louder, more insistent. They seemed to seep through the cracks in the wood, swirling around him in an eerie chorus. The door, hanging off its hinges, creaked ominously as he pushed it open. The flashlight's beam cut through the darkness, revealing a space cluttered with old tools and furniture, all coated in a thick layer of dust and cobwebs. But it was what lay beyond the mundane contents that froze Tommy's blood. In the far corner of the shed, partially obscured by shadows, stood an old mirror. Its frame was ornate, incongruously luxurious compared to the rest of the shed's contents. The glass was cloudy, but as Tommy's light fell upon it, the surface seemed to ripple like the surface of a disturbed pond. Drawn as if by an unseen force, Tommy approached the mirror. The whispers crescendoed, a cacophony of voices that filled his mind with an indescribable dread. He raised his flashlight, its beam trembling in his shaking hand, and peered into the mirror. What he saw was not his own reflection, but a glimpse into what appeared to be another world. Shadowy figures moved within the mirror, their forms twisted and contorted in agony. Their mouths opened in silent screams, and their eyes, empty of hope, seemed to plead with him. Terrified, Tommy stumbled backward, his heart racing, but as he moved, so too did the figures in the mirror. They reached towards him, their fingers stretching impossibly towards the glass's surface, and then, to his horror, one hand broke through the barrier, its fingers grasping at the air between the mirror and Tommy. The whispers turned to screams, both from the mirror and from Tommy himself. He turned to run, but found his path blocked by more shadowy figures emerging from the corners of the shed. They were the source of the whispers, their forms barely more than mist, their faces etched with sorrow and pain. In a panic, Tommy ducked and weaved through them, rushing towards the door. He could feel their cold, despairing touches as he passed, each one leaving a mark of icy fear on his skin. Bursting out of the shed, he ran back to the house, never once looking back. He burst into the house, his breath ragged, his eyes wide with fear. His parents, alarmed by his state, tried to calm him, but Tommy was inconsolable. He could still hear the whispers, feel the cold touch of the shadowy figures. From that day on, Tommy refused to go near the shed. His parents, concerned for his well-being, decided to have it torn down. But even as the shed was dismantled, the whispers remained, a haunting reminder of the night Tommy peered into another world. 
The Petersons eventually moved away from the house on Hawthorne Lane, but the story of the Whispering Shed passed into local legend. Some say that on quiet nights, if you listen closely, you can still hear the soft, desperate whispers. In the small, sleepy town of Willow's End, there was a house that stood slightly apart from the rest. It was an old structure, with walls that whispered of bygone eras, and windows that peered out like weary eyes. The house had been home to many families over the years, but its current residents, the Harpers, had a secret that lurked beneath the floorboards. The youngest Harper, a boy named Ethan, was a curious and fearless child. His world was filled with adventure and mystery, much of it centering around the old house they called home. However, there was one mystery that both intrigued and unnerved him, the light from the basement. Every night, long after his parents had gone to bed and the house had succumbed to silence, Ethan would notice a faint glow emanating from the floorboards of his room. It was a soft, pulsating light that beckoned to him, whispering secrets in a language he couldn't understand but felt compelled to decipher. His parents had always strictly forbidden him from venturing into the basement. They dismissed his questions about the light, chalking it up to the whims of an old house and a child's active imagination. But Ethan's curiosity was not so easily quelled. The light haunted his dreams, each night growing brighter, more insistent. One evening, as the light flickered with renewed urgency, Ethan decided he could no longer ignore its call. Armed with a flashlight and a heart full of courage, he tiptoed out of his room and down the creaking hallway. The house groaned under his steps, as if cautioning him against proceeding. The door to the basement was in the kitchen, a heavy wooden barrier that always seemed to loom larger than life. Ethan's small hands trembled as he reached for the doorknob, cold metal biting into his palm. With a deep breath, he turned it, the door swinging open with a groan. The stairs descended into darkness, the light from above barely penetrating the gloom. Ethan clicked on his flashlight, its beam cutting through the blackness like a sword. Step by cautious step, he made his way down, the air growing colder with each descent. At the bottom, Ethan found himself in a space much larger than he had imagined. The basement was vast, the corners lost to shadow. And there, in the center of the room, was the source of the light, a glowing orb suspended in mid-air. It pulsated with a soft, mesmerizing rhythm, casting the room in a spectrum of colors that danced across the walls. Ethan approached the orb, his sense of wonder growing with each step. It seemed to hum with energy, a low, harmonic vibration that resonated in his very bones. As he reached out to touch it, the light flared, enveloping him in a blinding brilliance. When the light receded, Ethan found himself no longer in the basement of his home, but in a place beyond his wildest dreams. It was a world suspended in twilight, with a sky of deep purples and blues, dotted with stars that shone with an ethereal light. The ground beneath his feet was soft, made of a substance that was neither earth nor sand, but something altogether different. He wandered this alien landscape, each step taking him further from the world he knew. Strange structures loomed in the distance, their shapes and sizes defying the laws of physics. Ethereal beings floated by him, their forms translucent and shimmering, paying him no heed. Time seemed to have no meaning in this place. Ethan walked for what felt like hours, drawn deeper into the heart of this otherworldly realm. The beauty of it was overwhelming, but a creeping sense of unease began to settle in his heart. He realized he had no idea how to return home. Back in Willow's End, the Harpers woke to find Ethan's bed empty. Panic set in as they searched the house, their worst fears confirmed when they found the basement door ajar. They called his name into the darkness below, but there was no response, only the echo of their own voices. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, but Ethan never returned. 
The light beneath the floorboards dimmed and eventually disappeared. The house on the outskirts of Willow's End fell silent, its secrets buried deep within its walls. To this day, the residents of Willow's End speak in hushed tones about the Harper boy who vanished into the light. Some say he found a door to another world, a place of endless twilight and impossible wonders. Others believe the house claimed him, another whisper in its ancient walls. But all agree on one thing. The basement of the old Harper house is a place best left unexplored, where the boundaries between worlds are thin, and the curious may find more than they bargained for.